Aloha Mai Kako, a Koma Mai the Curtain Call, a program of reviews and previews of the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul Janes Brown. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. This Sir Walter Scott quote could be the theme statement for Pro Arts production of the 1990 Olivier winner for Best Comedy, Out of Order by Ray Cooney. We can all use a good laugh, especially now, and this sharp, crisp, timely gem directed with precision by David Ballou has several gut-splitting moments, marvelous characters, and delivers one of the best nights of theater of the year. Dale Button, in one of his best performances since Don Quixote, is Richard Willey, a member of Parliament who is taking the night off from politics so he can have an illicit affair with Jane Worthington, the perfect Hanna Valley Webb, one of Jeremy Corbyn's secretaries. The former names were changed to contemporize the play. You will also hear Boris Johnson substituted for the original Margaret Thatcher. This, I am told by executive director Lynn McCune, were the only changes made to the script. This incipient affair is interrupted by an intruder, credited only as the body, Alan Muniz, in an astonishing performance, who was apparently the victim of a window slamming closed on him, which should also have gotten a credit in the program. It really is another character in the play and figures prominently throughout. I understand Julia Schwentner was responsible for bringing the window down on cue and that she was that good from the opening rehearsal, never missing a cue, according to Ms. McCune. Quick thinking Willie realizes what this could mean for the government, should it become public. Summons his parliamentary assistant George Pigeon, Lou Young, in his best performance yet, as the meek mama's boy who transforms as the morality and veracity around him crumbles into expediency. He enlists Pigeon into his conspiracy and pulls him deeper and deeper until he joins Willie in creating a reality made for the moment. The hotel manager, David Nagard, at first is appropriately solicitous, but as things deteriorate, goes from suspicion to active eviction from the premises of all parties. It's a masterful journey he takes the audience on. The waiter, the marvelous Richard Young, in a promising pro arts debut, is when we meet him, weary and subservient, and as things continue to fall apart, sees the opportunity for substantial remuneration and leaps at the occasion, gleefully celebrating each turn of the incipient conspiracy as another payday. As the suspicious wronged husband, Ronnie Worthington, Shane Borga, along with Mr. Nagard, own the most side-splitting, hilarious scenes in the show. Mr. Nagard's reaction to this moment is what makes it, as we realize what he thinks is going on. The cast should hold until the audience has the time to enjoy this moment thoroughly before pushing on with the play. Mr. Borga, in his best performance to date, is thoroughly believable as the working-class husband who thinks he has caught his wife in the act of adultery. The script calls for him to go from rage to inconsolable grief and back to rage again on a dime, and he accomplishes it with a plum. In the role of Mr. Pigeon's mother's nurse, Gladys Foster, Marcy Smith continues her string of terrific performances. Nurse Foster comes in as a surprise to find out what is going on with Mr. Pigeon and ends up undressed and ready to make mad, passionate love with him. Her exit is one to remember. Laura Kinney as Pamela Willey makes an auspicious debut as the unsuspecting wife of Dickie as his friends are wont to label Mr. Willey. Her shenanigans with Mr. Pigeon are entirely unexpected and marvelously hysterical. Finally, as the Spanish-Italian maid Kathy Worley was left with the task of unceremoniously interrupting, trying to do her duties, and unwittingly recruited to participate in the ongoing calumnies that were visited upon various clueless cast members. Farce is a form that requires precise timing, from doors opening, the window falling, to phone calls. Everything worked like a fine Swiss watch in this production. It's hard to know where to begin. Everyone in this cast was outstanding, but I guess the part that was the most unusual and so well done was the one that had no name, only credited as the body, was newcomer Alvin Muniz. This part calls for him to be a dead body, to be pulled from the window and carried to the closet and hung on a hook in the closet. Mr. Muniz is so convincing in this part, I had to be held back from calling 911. His surprise at the end of Act 1 makes you want intermission to be postponed so you can see what comes next. Dale Button has done so much good work over more than two decades on Maui stages, it's hard to believe that he found a truly new character in Richard Willey, but he did. 
His spot-on upper crust dialect and manner, coupled with his remarkable machine gun delivery as he makes it up as he goes along to suit the lie of the moment, kind of like someone who we know well, who currently temporarily occupies the domicile at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. Mr. Button shines every moment he is on. Hannah Valley Webb, who appears in bra and panties for much of the first act, behaves as if she is fully clothed. She doesn't have a moment of embarrassment or shame at being semi-nude. The innocence she portrays is perfect for this part, and yet she is being very naughty. When everything turns out the specter of her affair being discovered, she exhibits true fear. It is a tour de force performance by our finest ingenue. Lou Young's George Pigeon is the other star of the show. His George is at once unassertive, obedient, and mousy, until he gets with the flow in the second act and finds his machismo while getting with the program of mendacity established and promulgated by Mr. Button's Dickey. Director David Ballou gets the credit for bringing out these outstanding performances from well-known actors such as Mr. Button, Ms. Smith, Lou Young, and Mr. Nagard, as well as up-and-coming young actors such as Mr. Borga and newcomers such as Mr. Muniz, Rich Young, Ms. Kinney, and Ms. Worley. I cannot emphasize strongly enough the difficulty of directing a farce like Out of Order and the excellence that Mr. Ballou exhibited at every turn. Every choice was perfect and no second guesses could be suggested. This is Mr. Ballou's second time directing this according to the program notes, and I would have loved to have seen the first one to see what he learned from that one. He probably should have been credited as choreographer as well. The scenes were like dances, requiring actors to be in specific spots in order for the sight gags to work, and they all work perfectly. Bravissimo to Mr. Ballou. The other aspect of the show is the set. Ricky Jones was responsible for it. The tiny pro art stage is a tough challenge, and Mr. Jones was totally up to it providing the crucial window entrance as well as the other three doorways, including a closet door strong enough to support a person hanging from it and doors that have to be forcefully slammed without causing an earthquake on the stage. This was accomplished completely with excellence. Customer Kathleen Cat Gregory gets high points for Ms. Valley's dress and underclothes and Ms. Worley's maid suit. But the MP in a purple shirt with a multicolored tie? Never. MPs are extremely sartorially exact, and white shirts with a plain silk tie are de rigueur. Also, it would have been a better choice for George Pigeon to have been clad in a tweed jacket and dark trousers to indicate his difference in class for Mr. Willie. Mr. Degard's character, the hotel manager, would more likely than not be dressed in a morning coat with striped trousers, very formal in such a hotel. These are minor quibbles that the actors overcome. This is an outstanding show and one that everyone will enjoy. However, due to the current situation with COVID-19 virus, the Pro Arts Board has decided to postpone the final weekend of the show until we get an all clear from the health authorities. So stay tuned for an announcement in the future about when the final weekend of this show will be back. You do not want to miss it. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Next week, I'll have a review of Debra Fair's fabulous retrospective, Trinkets, Tokens, and Treasures, of a charmed life. Thanks for watching Curtain Call. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho.